Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. Today's episode is another installment in the Science of Geekery series. It's all about frickin' laser beams. Lasers. I am not nearly bald enough to pull that off, although, give it time. We're all familiar with sci-fi shows with laser guns that shoot a beam of colored light. It's helpful because we can actually tell who's shooting at who. And a lot of the times the beams will be color-coded so we can tell the good guys from the bad guys. The thing is, I've worked with lasers and they don't actually do that. They're usually invisible except for the dot on the thing they're shooting at. And the color depends on the energy and not who's holding it. LASER is an acronym. It stands for Light Amplification by the Stimulated Emission of Radiation, which sounds complicated but isn't. So light obviously means light. Amplification just means to make more of, the same way the amp on your speakers makes more sound. Emission of radiation sounds like it should involve giant glowing monsters, but it doesn't. Radiation doesn't automatically mean radioactive. It's just any form of energy that's moving in a straight line. Heat is radiation, radio waves are radiation, and light is radiation. Basically, the acronym is saying it's increasing light by giving off light. It's redundant, but those extra letters on the end make it easier to say. The important bit here is the stimulated. A stimulus is something that causes a reaction. It turns up in biology a lot when they're poking organisms to see what they do. Basically, we get no light emitted until we give it a prod. This is how a laser works. Inside it, there's a material that can absorb energy. The technical term for this material is gain medium, which I actually did not know until I started researching this video. Instead of gain medium, I will probably just call it the stuff. So in the fancier lasers, like the ones I used in my masters, the stuff is a mixture of noble gases, and in the cheap ones like this, it's a crystal. To make light, the stuff absorbs energy, usually electricity, and in this case it's from the batteries, and in the large ones it's from the wall. So the electrons in the atoms in the stuff absorb the energy from the electricity, and they jump to a higher energy state. This is called the excited state. The thing about being excited is it's hard to maintain that indefinitely. So eventually, the electrons get tired of being excited, and one of them will relax down to the ground state, and it releases that absorbed energy as a photon, which is a particle of light. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll probably notice I talk about photons a lot. Uh, my master's was in photochemistry, which is the chemistry of light, so it's just an occupational hazard. The chamber that stores the stuff has mirrors at each end. So the photon can bounce off the mirror, fly back into the stuff, and then interact with another excited electron, force it to release its energy as another photon, and now you have two. That's the stimulus, the S in lasers, that interaction of the photon with the excited atom. And if you do that a whole bunch of times, you get a whole bunch of photons. That's the amplification, the A in laser. One photon turns into an entire crapload of photons. And one of those mirrors at the end is slightly transparent, which means some of those photons, instead of bouncing off, can escape in a nice narrow beam like that, which is not a nice narrow beam, but I blame the webcam and the fact it's bouncing off my hand. Now you'll probably notice you can't see anything except where it hits my hand. Remember, all of these photons are moving in the same direction. And in order for you to see it, a photon has to enter your eye and strike your retina. And that's not happening here unless one of these photons happens to make an abrupt 90 degree turn. And that doesn't happen unless it hits something. So you can see the dot on my hand here because light is being scattered and reflected after smacking into my palm. Photons are going in all directions now, including to my eyes, and to the camera pickup. In order to see the beam itself, you need to look directly into the laser. And seriously, do not look directly into the laser. 
I actually uh, tried to shine it into the webcam earlier, and I almost blinded myself with reflection. So, this is not a toy. It's a cat exerciser, but it's not a toy. One thing I want to point out here is on camera, this laser beam looks like a big blob, whereas you're probably used to a small little dot. So this is an artifact of the camera itself. What's happening is when the laser hits my palm, it's actually penetrating my skin a little bit. Human skin is somewhat transparent to red light. So you can see it, it's glowing red through. This laser also has a white light, which looks reddish white coming through my thumb. So what's happening is the laser penetrates my hand and that light is reflected inside my tissue and re-emitted in sort of this broad smear. And then the webcam picks all of that up and it looks all the same. So I see a dot with a halo, but you see a circle. So that's why it looks the way it does, because technology. You'll notice that this laser is red, like most lasers on TV. You can get green lasers and blue lasers as well, and during grad school I used ultraviolet lasers. The color depends on the energy of the photons coming out, and that depends on the gap between the excited and the ground states in the stuff. And that can change depending on what type of stuff you use. So I discussed how the energy of a photon affects its color in my Why is the Sky Blue video, and I will link that down there. Enough science, now for some geekery. So very few shows actually do lasers correctly. They'll depict slow-moving, visible bolts or beams. And this is kind of unavoidable sometimes, because it's a rule of grammar. It increases the tension and conveys what's actually happening, if you can see the laser bolts being shot at the heroes. What does annoy me is when people dodge laser beams. Lasers are made of light, and therefore they move at the speed of light. Also, the thing you see them by is the thing they are, which is light. So by the time you see the laser beam, it has already hit you. Uh, many shows will get around this by calling their directed energy weapons blasters or phasers or PPGs and describing them as shooting plasma or particles or some sort of technobabble that isn't light. I always approve of going around rules of science if you can't avoid breaking them. One person who got this right was Isaac Asimov. Asimov was a chemist, so I may be kind of biased in liking him, and his stories generally conformed to the laws of science as they were known at the time of writing, except for the starships and the talking robots. Anyway, in the novel Foundation and Earth, the protagonists land on a planet and are attacked by a pack of wild dogs. If they'd had a sci-fi laser that shot colorful bolts and made pew 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 noises, they could have scared the dogs off. Instead, they had a silent, invisible, real-world laser that was quite effective at killing the dogs, except the dogs didn't realize it was a threat because they couldn't see or hear it. It's also an example of real-world science adding to the tension of the story. So that's lasers, electrical energy converted into light in a way that does not resemble what you see on TV. Thank you for watching. I've been Steve.